Hey everyone, and welcome to the Grow Hemp series. Today, we'll be showing you how to start your first indoor grow with a do-it-yourself bucket setup for around $100 and give a step-by-step -step guide on how my first indoor grow went with this setup. So for those of you who are handy and like to do DIY projects, today's episode is for you, as we will be building our own makeshift indoor grow setup with a couple of components that can be found everywhere. So let's go over all the equipment needed first before I explain how to put it all together. I started with four five gallon buckets. There are two ways to do this. You buy white buckets and then figure out a way to prevent light from getting in or buy black buckets and line the interior with reflective materials. I went with the white bucket route because it's easier to block light going in than to line the interior with mylar or paint the interior white. For the light source, I originally went with a Ford light bulb setup, which I was going to put in compact fluorescent bulbs. However, I was building this at the beginning of the summer, and it was already getting to be almost 100 degrees outside here in sunny California. So I went with a LED light that I took from my small grow tent setup to minimize the heat generated. The light was a bit larger than the bucket, but it was easy to modify the bucket to fit the light. And this way, I didn't have to buy a lid for the bucket. This bumps the cost of the setup significantly. So for those on a real tight budget, you can definitely get by with the four bulb setup. And I'll be posting another grow video with this setup once it gets a little bit cooler outside. Finally, I got two USB fans, one for the intake and one for the exhaust. I went with these because they were $2 at my local thrift store. However, if you're buying the fans online, I recommend going with a large PC fan, which are probably better because they're flat, so it gives more space in the bucket for the plant. And then finally, I needed a power strip to put it all together. So overall, my costs were $105 to build the most basic bucket grow setup possible, which is commonly known as a space bucket. And if you're on a budget, then with the compact fluorescent lights, the total cost would be only $45. Now for the plant, I got a feminized seed for $10, grow supplies which included a fabric pot, potting soil, perlite, and fertilizer for about $20, Note that total I spent about 100 for enough supplies to grow about 5 to 10 plants since it's hard to get supplies for just one plant. And finally, utility costs for the entire 3 month grow costed about $30 for the electricity and although for me water was basically free, let's just say $10 for the water. Before we start, I want to say that I am not very handy at all and even I was able to build one of these in a few hours. So it's definitely a doable project for the average Joe. I started with the five gallon buckets and removed all of the handles. I then used a power drill to drill a few holes on the bottom of the main bucket for the excess water runoff and then used one of the USB fans to outline the hole I needed to cut to fit the intake fan making sure I positioned it so it would also blow where the plant would grow and double as a fan for the plant. From what I've tried, just about anything sharp will cut through one of these plastic buckets. But after trying a couple of things, I definitely recommend going with a jab saw because it's one of the cheapest cutting tools available if you don't own one already. And it's very maneuverable, making it great for precision cuts such as cutting a circle. For the bucket holding the light, I just made one cut to fit the light into the top and then another circular cut on the side of the bucket to fit the exhaust fan. Then for the buckets that I'm using to adjust the height, I used a string around the bucket to make a straight cut through. For each of these buckets, I cut off the bottom two thirds. Then to make sure that they stack straight on top of each other, I taped the stack of cards onto all four sides of the bucket under the stopper so that each bucket added about five to six inches in height. Remember that since this is a do-it-yourself project, you can do anything you'd like to make sure each bucket 
adds the correct amount of additional height you want. For me, I didn't want to do anything fancy or time consuming. And using a stack of cards was the simplest way I could think of with what I had lying around. I then secured a nail inside the handle hole of the main bucket, used that to hang the power strip, and then drilled two additional holes on the bottom to zip tie the power strip into place. For the water runoff, I was able to get a metal pot holder and a serving tray for a dollar each and use that as a makeshift runoff catcher. And voila, two hours and a ton of plastic shreds everywhere, but we have a basic space bucket. Note that I did not cover the exterior of the space bucket in any way, which I'll explain why during my grow. However, for most setups, this is the point where you use something like black tape to wrap around the bucket to make it light proof. And now for the seeds. I started with two separate seeds and put them in small peat pots filled with potting soil. Peat pots are completely biodegradable pots that allow you to transplant a plant into a bigger pot without having to remove the peat pot. I placed the seedlings under a covered patio because they don't need too much light early on and let them grow for a week before choosing the healthier one for the space bucket. And here, as you can see, the outdoor heat is killing these seedlings, so it's time to move them inside. For those curious about how the second plant is doing, don't worry. You'll see more of it in a future video. So here I went with a fabric 3 gallon pot that fit perfectly in the space bucket. I mixed it with basic potting soil and a third of perlite, and then just dropped the plant in along with the peat pot. Now here's the reason why I didn't make my space bucket light proof. I used 18 hours of light from 6pm to noon the next day when the temperature was a little cooler, but I also placed the space bucket under a window so that it would get additional lighting from outside when the LED lights were off. Not a lot, but every little bit helps. And for those wondering about the plant not getting a dark cycle, hemp is classified as a C3 plant which means that it actually doesn't need a dark cycle for photosynthesis. It is possible for the plant to keep growing through a 24 hour light cycle, which is debatable whether that leads to a noticeable increase in growth over an 18 hour light cycle. But if I was getting the extra lighting for free anyways, I figure why not? Also, this way the space bucket actually doubled as a large nightlight for the grow room. Not the best colored nightlight, but the additional lighting was pretty useful throughout the grow. Now all I'm doing is watering the plant every few days when the soil feels dry down to the first inch with a mix of water and grow nutrients. And each time the plant begins to show signs that the light is too close because the leaves will start curling upwards. I would add another bucket to increase the height of the light. While the plant's growing, I'll go over a couple of things I noticed from this grow. First of all, as you saw, from the differences in the two seedlings, each hemp seed, even from the same mother plant, can have wildly different characteristics. Some seeds will produce explosively fast, large yielding plants. Most seeds will be somewhere in the middle. And rarely you'll get a seed that sprouts a very slow growing sickly plant, no matter what you do. Unfortunately, this is a huge issue for new growers because they won't have the experience to know that it's the seed's fault the plant is sick and instead will think that they did something wrong, which is why if you have access to clones, they're definitely the better option to start out because you know exactly what to expect. Or if you're able to germinate more than one seed at a time, definitely do so so you can compare the seedlings to see if any of them have any issues. For the potting mix, I use a third of perlite which if you've seen my other grow videos, this will sound like a broken record. But for those who haven't seen them, perlite is a lightweight rock-like material that helps keep the soil from retaining too much water. This is useful because while hemp can easily handle underwatering, it cannot handle overwatering. And doing so can lead to increase in bugs, mold, root rot, or even have the plant drown to death. So the perlite, along with the fabric pot, helps mitigate overwatering. Now because I wanted to keep the plant short since it's in the space bucket, I used two different simple grow techniques to keep the plant short, which I'll go over briefly. 
I first top the plant in the third week of growth. What this means is that I removed the top of the plant, which forced it to make the two top side nodes the new top of the plant. This has two effects. One, it makes the plant shorter because the top of the plant now is growing out of the side of the plant and is much easier to manipulate, as you'll see soon. And two, the way hemp works is that the very top of the plant will always grow the most buds. So having multiple top stems at the same height will make them all yield a lot more buds. I gave the plants a few days to recover from topping, and then I switched the light cycle from veg to flower, and switched the nutrients from a grow nutrient to a flower nutrient. So remember how I didn't cover the bucket with anything to prevent light from getting in? Well, instead of doing that now, because I needed 12 hours of darkness a day, I decided to try a faster, cheaper way by building a makeshift tent with black trash bags taped to the grow tents next to the bucket and a chair in front of the space bucket. This by no ways is 100% light proof, but it did seem to get rid of most of the light coming into the room, and it worked because the plant seemed to be flowering, so I stuck with it. Now that the top of the plant has grown enough to manipulate, I used another basic grow technique called low stress training. All this is, is using something to manipulate the stems to grow in a direction you want it to grow. In this case, I'm using plastic twist ties to lower the top two stems down to the same height as the two stems on the node below it. This shortened the overall height of the plant, and now that all four stems are the same height, all of them will benefit from being the top stem and yield more buds. As you can see now, the plants are starting to flower, and all four major stems are at the same height, so low stress training is working. So if you notice now, there are some black spots starting to form on the leaves, which was caused by an organic pest control I just sprayed on because I noticed there were a few thrips in my large grow tent, so I sprayed everything down in the room. Unfortunately, the main active ingredient of the organic pest control was neem oil, which when used outside during the day, didn't seem to affect the plants at all. However, under the intense LED lighting, it seemed to be burning up the leaves. So I had to remove the leaves that were really burnt by this, and now I know not to use this while the lights are on. As we wait for the buds to fatten, I'm watering the plants basically every day now. I also made the mistake of forgetting to replace one of the height buckets for a day after watering the plant. I definitely do not recommend forgetting to do this as it is not good for the plant. One of the things about using a space bucket is that I didn't want the fabric pot to be completely full of soil because that would take up too much precious height. So I folded it down and only used the bottom two-thirds of the pot. The problem now is that without much soil to work with, the plant constantly needs watering. After about seven weeks of flowering, although there are still a lot of white hairs on the buds, a closer look showed that about 10 to 20 percent of the trichomes on the buds are starting to turn amber, so I decided it was time to harvest the plant. Like usual, I removed all the major fan leaves outside first, and now you can see that while the plant looked a lot larger while it was growing, it was actually only 7 inches tall by the time I harvested. Due to topping, low stress training, and flowering the plant early on. I did a very simple trim, removing the fan leaves and anything big poking out of the buds. Trimming is a personal preference, so whether you like to spend the time to manicure the buds down for a top shelf look, or do not trim at all, there is no wrong way to do it. Of course, after I trimmed, I saved my trimmings in a paper bag to dry, 
so I could use it later for making things such as bubble hash. To dry the buds, I just hang the stems on a hanger with clips on them. And in about 5 days, the buds felt dry to the touch, so it was now time to cure. I cut off all the buds into glass mason jars with humidity readers attached to the lids so I can confirm that the buds are ready for curing. And in the end, I ended up with almost an ounce, which for a 7 inch tall plant is a great harvest. And that's it.